All right, for the venue segment today, I thought I would give you a nice, easy one. Um, this is one I've been doing for a long time with venue and uh, have showed it to a lot of people, and it's really, really an effective way to handle a main microphone, meaning a main vocal microphone, and a spare microphone so that you don't have to double up your channel processing, right? If, if during the, uh, the course of the show you were to lose the main microphone and you decided to go to your backup microphone, it's plugged into a, a separate mic pre. I mean, uh, obviously, you know, we want it in its own mic pre, but we want to be able to take uh, take advantage of all the channel processing that we've built up, in, you know, channel EQ, et cetera, so that we don't have to track two channels uh, throughout the show to keep them both in alignment in case we need to switch over to that second channel. What we're basically going to do is use a snapshot uh, to repatch the spare channel into the normal channel, right? Now, keep in mind, it's got its own preamp. It's going to patch into your processing channels, and then you can just carry on working right where you were before. The only thing you have to make sure of, obviously, is that both uh, of the preamps are set at the same level, and then you can just carry right on. They can move the microphone over, and you can just pick up right where you left off, all right? So let me get the camera turned around, and I'll show you how we do that really quickly. All right, we're going to start out right on the snapshot page here. I'm going to show you how to create the snapshot first. And then I'm also going to use the media page and some events to show you how to actually uh, manipulate this move very, very quickly. Because obviously you want to be able to do this under fire. You want to be able to do it under pressure. You don't want to have to be searching around for snapshots, etc. Right. So uh, in my snapshot list, if I scroll down here, you'll see that I have a snapshot called TP main vocal and TP spare vocal. And you'll also notice that I have one channel scoped, right? So this is the only channel these two snapshots are going to affect. Uh, the input patch of, those, uh, of that channel is what we're going to impact with the snapshot. And the same for the name. We're going to actually change the name of it if we go to the spare mic to indicate that we're on the spare mic, you know, and help save confusion with it, okay? So those are our two snapshot choices we have there, TP main vocal or TP spare vocal. Um, I'm also going to go to the recall safe grid and just show you one other thing here. Just remember, if you're going to do that on this processing channel, it has to be unsafe with regard to its input patch and with its name, right? We have to have those two things not in, uh, in the safe grid uh, in order to, to recall this, okay? So the next piece of the puzzle here is to go to the media page and create a pair of events, all right? So we're going to create one event that's called Tom Main Vocal and one event that's called Tom Spare Vocal. All right, so you can see the one that I have called uh, Tom Main Vocal here. I, I am going to use a function switch to initiate that patch of that vocal to my processing channel. Excuse me. <coughs> so you can see now I have it assigned to function switch 6. And when that is pressed, what is going to happen is it's going to recall snapshot TP Main Vocal. All right. Now I've added other functionality to this action here to also help guide us and keep us from getting confused. And that is I'm going to have that function switch flash and I'm also going to have it turn off the function switch for the spare patch, all right, so for the spare event. So notice I have a second event here called Tom Spare Vocal. It is going to be function switch 12. When it is pressed, we're going to recall snapshot TP Spare Vocal. It's going to light or flash, I should say, function switch 12 and turn off function switch 6, right? So we don't have both of them flashing. So if you can kind of see down here on the console, I hope you can see that in this wide view here. Um, right now we have Tom's main vocal flashing. That means that's the one that's patched in. I'm going to go back to the snapshots page here. Actually, yeah, let's do it here. I'll show it here so you can actually see what's happening here. All right, to actually show you what's going to happen here, I'm going to actually take you to the patch bay page. So you can see Tom's vocal here and that it is patched from input 33, right? So I'm going to press the spare vocal event that I've set up, and you'll notice that it changes that to channel 34, right, which is where that spare vocal mic is patched in. Now, granted, we have an actual channel that is assigned to 34. It's just an open channel for us. We don't actually use it on the console. But if we did, we would have to duplicate the channel processing on it to match Tom's spare vocal, right? Which we don't really want to do. We want to save some DSP here and not have to use both of those channels. So, uh, or both of those processing channels. So by doing this, just by being able to go back and forth, uh, we can uh, use the main vocal, use the EQ that we've developed throughout the show, the processing settings that we've used throughout the show. If we have to go to the actual spare microphone, we just do that and patch it in to that channel and off we go. Right now we're on the spare mic. 
All right, so pretty easy, really nice now that we got the momentary snapshots, etc. So uh, I hope you guys make good use of this. It's a great way to handle uh, main and spare microphones and still stay really efficient in your DSP use. Uh, keep it really clean in terms of patching and show file, etc. Okay, we'll see you on the next venue segment. Uh, wish me luck tonight in Tampa. Let's have a good show. We're ready for a good one tonight. I think the band's going to have a good one tonight. Just can feel it coming. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.